Rectilinear locomotion of snakes relies on movement of the skin for propulsion rather than bending the vertebral column. Nearly 70 years ago, Lisman hypothesized the muscular mechanisms of this major mode of snake locomotion, and we tested these using electromyography. The relevant muscles for this mode of locomotion are the costocutaneous superior in red, extending posteriorly and ventrally from the rib to the skin. The costocutaneous inferior in green extends anteriorly from the tip of the rib to the skin. And the fibers of the interscutalis muscle are in blue and confined to the skin, extending longitudinally from one ventral scale to an adjacent ventral scale. The dorsal skin and the vertebra move forward with a nearly constant speed, whereas more ventrally, the skin oscillates forward and backward relative to the underlying skeleton. The ventral skin periodically has static contact with the ground, and during most of this time, the belly skin is maximally shortened. The ventral skin is then stretched as it moves and slides forward both relative to the ground and the skeleton. Note that Lisman documented long ago the ribs do not move relative to the vertebra. The costocutaneous superior is active as the skin slides forward relative to the ground and the skeleton. The costocutaneous inferior is active during static contact and propels the skeleton as it slides forward relative to the ground and the ventral skin. The interscutalis first shortens the skin and then isometric activity during static contact keeps the skin from being stretched during the propulsive phase. Most of Lisman's hypotheses for the costocutaneous activity were supported. However, the observed and predicted activity of the interscutalis differed, mainly because of its isometric activity during static contact.